Greetings folks, in this video we're going to be revisiting an old favourite FPV plane of mine, the Talon GT Rebel, but this is the unassembled kit, so we're going to have to put the whole thing together uh, from scratch. Now back uh, four or five years ago this was one of uh, the hot new releases, rather like the uh, Atom RC Swordfish of today. Uh, which I absolutely love and is currently my favourite INAV uh, FPV plane. Uh, the Talon GT Rebel was kind of that sort of plane four or five years ago. Anyway, Banggood asked me to do a few more videos to get a bit more traffic going to their website, so uh, I gave them a list of things that I'd like to review, and this was one of the things they sent to me. With the newer versions of INAV and the better HD FPV gear available these days uh, and more knowledge of INAV and how it works, I thought it would be a good time to reassess how the Talon GT Rebel performs with all the new gear. OK, let's open it up and start putting it together. Now, because the Talon GT is an unassembled kit, uh, it means that you can put all your own components in it, you can build it however you want to. There are a few mods I think I would like to make to it, um, especially around the nose. I think the nose is quite uh, blunt and draggy. Uh, I'd really like to extend the nose and taper it down a little bit, so I may come up with a 3D printed design for a different nose possibly. Control horns on the control surfaces were quite short which made uh, setting up the throws a bit difficult. The throws were, were very large to start off with. So I may even change the control horns to longer ones. I like the Talon GT a lot because it was very very convenient in the size and the access inside. It's a one meter wingspan I think. The wings just plug in and plug out and make the connections. Same with the tail so you can break it down if you want to. Uh, and it fits on your desk very nicely for setting up INAV. Easy access into the flight control bay area and, and lots of space for batteries as well. And being a kit means that it's very cheap too. I think it's selling for around 60 US uh, dollars, which is a lot less than it used to be and way cheaper than most other models around at the moment. So it's all good. Now one of the first things I have to work out is uh, which glue I'm going to use. This EPP being shiny and possibly having some chemical on the surface. It means that lots of glues don't work with it very well at all. Now I've tried sandpapering and uh, washing with meth methylated spirits, cleaning with methylated spirits and re-gluing using trying CA glue and uh, Yoohoo poor contact cement and the only thing I can find that is working really well is hot glue. So uh, it looks like hot glue is going to be it. There's the Yoohoo pour after cleaning and sanding. It's just peels straight off. It doesn't even adhere at all to the surface. This is hot glue and I'm actually having to tear the foam to get it apart. So hot glue wins hands down, which is unfortunate. I was hoping to use a different sort of glue. Now first step is to glue the longerons or the carbon fibre spars inside the fuselage. So we'll do that for both sides. Uh, and then put the two halves together.
time to fit servos and I have uh, four of these wonderful little FR Sky uh, exact uh, HV5611 and HV5612 that's just the different direction mounts uh, so I'm going to use them they're high speed digital Metal Gear beautiful little servos programmable and with telemetry and everything so uh, really good choice they fit perfectly in the wing I'll have to carve out a bit of foam for the tail to make them fit, but that's no drama. They're a bit shallower than the uh, cutout, but I'll just pop a little bit of foam in there to support it and hold it in place. It fits so nicely, just a little couple of dobs of hot glue and a bit of tape over the top will hold it nice and securely. Now, I remember with the original Talon GT, uh, we had a lot of problems with having too much throw on the ailerons and the tail surfaces and that's because of these really short control horns uh, so well, although I'm using the same control horns I'm connecting the push rod to uh, an inner hole on the servo so we'll get nice um, reasonable throws to start off with using a hundred percent resolution of these uh, really nice accurate little servos and the cable is exactly the right length too so uh, it's a good choice And with that push rod connection, we are getting about 10 millimeters up and 10 millimeters down, which is absolutely perfect for the other ones. To get the right throws for the tail, uh, we need to go into the second hole on the servo, outer hole on the control horn and using a 50-50 Elevon mix otherwise the throws are going to be too big time to mount up the motor now and I have a Sunny Sky 22-16-12-50kV which is pretty much the same as the original it came with the uh, plug and play version and ESC, you have a Turnergy Plus 40 amp ESC. You can screw into the holes in the motor mount so that you can uh, remove the motor and swap it out later on, which is what I always like to do. Uh, and then we're going to just hot glue that in there, and that will be nice and secure. And the screws are still accessible from the outside, which is good. And 8x4 prop. I'm using a Radio Master ER8 ELRS PWM receiver. Ailerons on a wire lead going to channel 1. We've got uh, tail surfaces in 2 and 4. And we'll put the ESC in 3. 100% ailerons on channel 1, 30% expo. 50-50 mix of elevator and rudder for uh, channel 2 and channel 4, they're the tail surfaces uh, and making them negative or positive as required and channel 5 just sent to max because uh, Express LRS likes that so there are my throws, I've got about a uh, little bit too much probably but uh, Expo should take care of that and when I uh, connect up a flight control board that will all sort of be taken care of as well so throws I've got about 10 millimeters up and down on the ailerons, about uh, 8 or 10 millimeters up and down on the elevator and uh, same left and right on the rudder. So we're pretty much ready to pop a battery in, balance the prop and take it out for a fly. Initially I'll just take it for a line of sight fly, I'll pop a camera on it uh, to get some aerial shots to show how smooth it is uh, and then in future videos I'll pop a um, flight control board in there and we'll do some iron have set up as well. So with this sort of minimal setup I can get it to balance with an 18650 4S right up in the nose and uh, maybe a run cam 4 on the nose like that. 
that's balancing right on the marks at a weight of 908 grams. So that's a pretty lightweight build, uh, which will make it nice and easy to fly. It'll be a bit, little bit heavier if I put a LiPo, 4S LiPo in there, which I may do, um, and flight control board and uh, FPV gear and all that sort of stuff. But uh, that's it for the assembly. Next up, we'll do a line of sight flight uh, and get some onboard footage. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.